Hey guys, it's Dave from Voidsmith Innovation. And today we are launching a video that we've been promising for a long time. Um, basically, about four months ago, we set out with a vision to build the ultimate testing truck and uh, for our company, whether it's testing different products, different plows side by side, or uh, just regular rock salt alongside of liquid. And um, finally, after a lot of effort and countless man hours, we've put together this L8000. Um, and it is going to be our, like I said, our, our test vehicle for this, the rest of the season. This truck is actually running a Plowmax Live Edge. It's a 104217. Um, and to get this Plowmax to fit on this L8000, we had to put the Truck Max attachment plate on it. A lot of fabrication work to get the, the plow to actually mount onto the truck, but overall um, worked out really well. So a little background story on this truck. It was uh, one of our farm trucks and uh, just a flatbed truck. We stole another L8000 that if you looked at some of our Instagram posts, it was the first one that we ever posted plowing. We stole the live hydraulics off at the valve body, um, the dump body, the hoist, everything, and then we had to retrofit to go on this truck. So now that everything's working, it's gonna be its debut uh, snow event tonight. Uh, we're gonna be picking about two to five inches. So a lot of cool features on this truck. Why don't we start running you through them? So probably one of the most challenging parts about this build was actually getting this old plow mount to, to retrofit to the, the plow max mount. We had to do quite a bit of fabrication work on it. Um, the nice thing is that the municipal plow max mount did meet up to the, the frame width of the old um, mount that was on the other L8000. So basically we had to chop that apart, weld some pins in it, uh, long story short, um, got everything to sit off the truck just fine and, and had the correct height for the plow to operate. Um, obviously you can see the live hydraulic pump up there, um, which runs off the crankshaft of the 3208 cat in this truck. Um, quite a bit of planning, quite a bit of work that went into it, but everything's working awesome up here. So one of the first things we had to consider when we were looking to build a, a testing truck for Minnesota Winters was how do we protect the body of the truck um, to maximize the, the, the lifespan of the vehicle itself. So we, we actually personally undercoated the truck ourselves. It's inside and underneath the, the bottom of the cab, all around the, the wheel wells of the truck, the fuel tanks, everything. And if we look up inside the, the, the wheel wells of the truck, we have the whole um, engine compartment covered with, with rubber so that we don't get the road spray up on it. Basically, we're looking to protect this truck as much as we can from the elements when we're out plowing. So one of the hardest parts about not only manufacturing the liquid de-icing equipment, but also trying to go out and test is that we have a very narrow window of opportunity to run diff a bunch of different products side by side, do all the tests, follow up work. Um, so this truck is really gonna help us um, kind of redefine our, our testing structure. And some of the really cool things that this truck can do is you're, no you're gonna notice that it's carrying one of our stock thousand gallon ASMs on the, the body itself. And there's three 100 gallon tanks up against the back rack of, the, of the, the truck itself. So what that allows us to do right now is we can actually carry four different products at any point in time. Once we get to the cab, we'll kind of show you how we can switch between all of these tanks independently. But basically for right now, there's all, uh, there's electric valves between every tank so we can draw from tanks number one, two, three, the main tank, um, so that we can do different test patterns with, with products side by side within a couple of seconds of applying them so we get very good test data. One thing that everyone wants to see is how well does rock salt work alongside liquid. So we did outfit the truck with a very uh, uh, entry level salt spreader. But the nice thing is it should work just fine. It's got an 800 pound capacity. We also added pre-wet on this system. So that runs off the exact same pump on the truck. And we also have the ability to switch it between the same tank options that we do for applying liquid. Where this is really cool is we can actually add a straight calcium additive for treating at the spinner or just run our salt brine and unblended products if we want to. So this should give us a really good feel of how um, liquid does pair up against salt or how salt does pair up against liquid. So here's a little bit better view of our test tanks. Um, and you can see that we also have a valve uh, manifold system here and, and some electric valves on the tanks themselves. There is a tremendous amount of wiring that, that went into this truck. So basically when we switch a, which switch a tank on, there has to be a bypass valve that opens up for every suction valve that opens up. So we bypass back in the same tank. This uh, is actually really important for us so we don't get cross contamination issues between different products or um, potentially overflow a tank that is not supposed to be bypassed into. So every tank is actually isolated from any other tank on the truck itself. To, uh, to make the system come on, come on and off the truck a little bit easier, we do have some um, 
quick disconnects on the wiring itself. Everything else is uh, equipped with four pockets so we can pull it off. One really cool feature I forgot to mention when I was back here is that uh, we did also equip this truck with air purge. And uh, what air purge is is basically we can clean out any line, whether it's going to the truck, from the truck, any lines on the truck itself, to any of the tanks. Uh, and this can be done with any truck with air brakes. Basically, we just tie into one of the air tanks. We have a pressure regulator on here. It works the exact same as, uh, as our brine makers do. So really nice because this truck will be a support truck for us in the field or when we're delivering products in the area. Um, just makes handling the hoses a little bit easier at the end of the day. All right, so now we're in the cab of the truck and this is really where all the magic happens. Um, you'll notice that everything else in here is just a standard L8000 cab, but if you look over here, back in the day there was not an extension um, that went on these trucks that had any type of options to mount switches or anything. So we, we made a, a switch panel here and you can see the, the switches across um, the panel that actually control everything in the back of the truck. One of the hard part is we use lighted switches that are customized to what the actual um, part that we're controlling in the back of the truck. But one hard part is the lights will stay on if they have constant power. So we had to run a solenoid that actually supplied power to everything when the key came onto the truck. And you'll notice that everything's lighting up here. Uh, this truck was not equipped with the radio uh, from the factory, so we added one of those because you can't fly without music. Backup camera, very essential for us since the, the back of this truck is completely enclosed. We cannot see through it. We can use our mirrors, but um, still cannot see directly behind the truck. We have the, the salting control right up here for us, real easy to, uh, to access. Um, then you'll notice down here, we have all of our switches uh, for the lighting on the truck. Have a lot of money invested in lighting just because we like to be able to see what we're doing. And then you can also see that we have our tank control. So we have main tank, which is the thousand gallon, um, and then numbers one through three. Then we have some aux switches and, and other things to control other features. We have the controller mounted directly next to me um, so that I can easily see it. This truck is a 10 speed, so one cool thing that we did is we, we relocated the run hold switch, which is basically your boom lock. Um, so if you do not want to reach over here and turn the switches on and off, you can just simply put the controller on hold and it'll turn them all off. We chose to put that on the shifter because it's going to be a lot easier for me to shift the truck, run my three lane booms or even my single lane while I'm shifting um, right on the shifter. You can see we have the Metal Plus controller here mounted on the, the uh, hydraulic valve body inside the truck. Really nice. We had to do a little bit of bending on the handles themselves to get them to be comfortable. But from here, I have the full independent wing control plus the angle control um, all on one lever. And then just the, the lift and the, the set down for the plow, also along with the dump body and the live hydraulics for the, the hydraulic pump that we have equipped on this truck. So it uh, took quite a bit of work to get it as clean as it was. You can see some of the main wiring harnesses running out of this truck. They all exit the cab very nicely, run down the frame. We also have some spots for some GoPros mounted up here so um, you guys can get some actual footage that, you know, and see how we're, we're actually operating this truck. There's a lot of things going on when we're, when we're out here plowing in it. All right, so there you guys have it. 17-foot Metal Plus Live Edge Plow mounted on a 1985 LE1000, loaded with a tremendous amount of features for testing. Um, we had a lot of fun doing the build. We're uh, planning on doing some more in the future here, but stay, for, or stay tuned to see some of our new videos of this truck in action.